Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Shorba, and today we're going to recap Game 7 of the Jacksonville Jaguars 2024 NFL season where they managed to, to avoid a, a complete collapse and it really what seemed like it was going to be a change of fortune, right? There's a lot of talk this week about how Doug Peterson's job was on the line. There's no way that he's going to survive out of this game if they lose, and he had to win this game. And it looked scary early on for Jacksonville. They went down 10 to nothing. New England was driving the ball down the field at will. And then Jacksonville came back. And Jacksonville started scoring each drive. And they were playing well on offense. They had a really good rushing attack today. So we're going to talk about this. The individual performances, some things that we can get out of this game. And then is this really, because this is the big question. Every time this team's going to win from now on. Is this really the change that the Jaguars need? Or is this a sign of better things to come? Are they suddenly a competent football team? That's the big question, right? And you all probably know what my answer is, but we'll still talk about it. So with that said, Trevor Lawrence, 50 of 20, 193 yards, one touchdown. Um, you know, once again, like, we talk a lot about volume. At least I have with Trevor, and that's been one thing that's always kind of disappointed me throughout his career. But this was a day where, as you can see, the Jaguars were able to rush the ball very effectively. And if you're able to do that, then this is acceptable, right? This is fine. And Lawrence was doing a good job. He was on target most of the game. He was making good throws. You weren't really seeing him play bad football, right? He's playing good football for the Jaguars, taking what's there. And that's all you can really ask. But obviously, you know, not some, like, incredible day. Not like he's elite, per se. But a good day from Trevor Lawrence. Now, the most impressive part of this team is undoubtedly the running from the game. They had 37 attempts on the game, taking out Trevor Lawrence's. I don't, think, I don't know if any of those were designed. I guess there was, like, a fourth and one sneak. So perhaps you could say like 39. But basically, a lot of carries were coming from this back. And with Travis, sorry, Travis Etienne out, you know, this was Tank Bigby's day. He was the guy. They had Dearness Johnson kind of fill in that role of the pass catching guy, um, more so playing that. He had three receptions on the day, 32 yards. And just what Travis Etienne has normally done. But Bigsby was the main rusher. It had another really good day on the day. You know, I think he's been a nice breath of fresh air, and I think he's been what this team has needed. We've discussed that a little bit on this channel, where if for Travis Etienne and Tank Bixby, they're two different types of players, right? And Bixby's style fits a lot more what Jacksonville has needed throughout the season because they need that tough, dominant runner up the middle who can get the tough short yard. And Travis Etienne, he's someone who needs space. He's someone who needs good blocks, and then he's really going to punish you doesn't mean he's a worse player, but he needs space. And Jacksonville just hasn't been able to get him that in the run game. So it's no shock that Tank Bigsby's playing really well. But with, with 118 yards on the ground today and a really good game, you know, I think at this point, and we could always be wrong, but I think it's a matter <coughs> a matter of time until Travis is done. Not that I want that. Not that that's, you know, what, what I'm – desiring it's just I, I don't see how that doesn't happen right this is going to be the highest value that he's going to have any longer you wait past this year it's going to go down you're going to have one season left you're going to have to pay him a little bit more it's going to be six million against the cap there's not as much incentive and if the Jaguars are going to run the ball with Bigsby more which that's fine it makes more sense you got to do this now because if you don't Travis Etienne's value goes down because teams are looking at him like, okay, this is a guy who's getting, you know, seven, eight carries a game and you know, three receptions. Is that really a dominant player? Am I going to give up a second-round pick for this guy or a third? So that's the question that I think teams will have looking at him. But I do think it's a matter of time. Until Travis Etienne's trade, I think that's pretty well set at this point. And, you know, Johnson, while it wasn't like some incredible day, he – played pretty well, I think, especially as a receiver. And so it'll work. You know, you can get through this year with those guys. And 
Heck, who's to say you can't do it again the next year, too? If, you know, someone's not available in the draft or you don't have a guy that you want to target in the free agency, this works with these guys. And so really the most important part is working on that offensive line and getting some speed. Because you're, you're going to have more success with average runners behind great offensive lines than great runners behind average offensive lines. So just kind of the way I'm looking at it. Now, Brian Thomas Jr., I mean, same old, same old, right? Playing great football every single week. 89 yards, five receptions, one touchdown. Playing really well. I think my uh, my favorite or most interesting play of the day was his uh, two-point conversion, I think it was, where he's getting outside leverage on, Chris, I think it was Christian Gonzalez. It just completely kills him off the line. Like, he's got tons of separation there. But he's got to cut back inside for the route. And I'm looking at the play, I'm thinking, surely he's going to the corner because he's got so much separation on him. Well, he cuts inside, and he's still open on the play. Like, they've got Gonzalez all over the place trying to cover him, which Gonzalez has played great football, but it hasn't been easy the last couple of years. So, really good game from BTJ. Other than that, though, there's just not a whole lot they're getting out of this receiving core. At this point, you know, Evan Ingram obviously got a few receptions in this game, too, just as many as Brian Thomas Jr., but what these other players are really doing is not super impressive. I mean, it's it's been fine, but you'd like to see more. You know, I'd like to see him get Christian Kirk more involved. I think even with Brian Thomas Jr. getting a lot of targets, there's just no reason why Kirk can't be in those situations. And I'll have to watch the film and see if maybe – He's just struggling, or they're just forgetting about him, or what it is, but I'd like to see him more involved in the offense. And then just the final note for the offense, you're not going to see the players listed here, but it's worth noting, this team's doing really well on the ground. So you'll love to see it. You saw a little bit more of that physicality from Jacksonville. Now, my main thing is that think about the teams they've been physical against. Think about the teams that you've seen examples of that from since last year. The three teams that come to mind are the three teams they beat. And they're not impressive teams, right? Like, this win is not some incredible feat by the Jaguars. It was the Carolina Panthers last year, week 17. It was the Indianapolis Colts at home in week 5 this year. And it was this game against the New England Patriots. Those were the teams they got physical. Opponents that were clearly inferior, whether because their team sucked or because it's the Colts playing well. So, before I'm, like, sitting here saying, oh, hey, maybe they're getting average against the run or blocking for the run, they got to do this against better teams, right? You can't just go beat up the the small kid on the playground and act like you're all tough, right? Like, you want to prove yourself, go take on someone that's your own size. And maybe someone who's even bigger. Jacksonville hasn't done that, but it is at least nice to see in this kind of game. You're doing what you're supposed to do and finding some success on the ground. It's been a long time since we've been able to sit here and say the Jaguars won a game because they were able to run the football. It's been a really long time. Part of that is just they haven't won a lot of games recently. Now for the defense, you know, Trayvon Walker had some really nice plays at the end of the game. He was really getting involved, and I, I thought he did a phenomenal job later on. And, you know, he's winning a lot of the same ways, right? It's the bull rush. It's the power. But it's working. And it's it's such a massive advantage that he has that even if you can predict what's coming more often than you can with other really good pass rushers, it's hard for people to compete against because you still just cannot be ready for it. So, Trayvon Walker... He's doing a phenomenal job. I think I saw a stat where he had like 16 sacks in the last 24 games. That's good stuff, right? I mean, if you stay on that pace, we're talking about, what, 11 sacks, 12 sacks in a season? That's great. Like, that's what we want to see out of Trayvon Walker in the number one overall pick, and that does a lot more to justify it. You know, and you've obviously had some good play against the run in addition, and so – Good stuff to see from Trayvon Walker. He is continuing to get better. He's continuing to take steps forward. And at a point, like, you know, the whole thing last year with the 10 sacks and people making arguments against that was that, hey, they didn't look that impressive. 
and I agree to some extent with that. I also think it's harsh. But when that continues, when you're going to keep producing, at some point, you can't really fight against it. You can't just be like, oh, well, five years in a row, he's just been lucky, right? Like, this is the second year in the league where Trayvon Walker's playing great football. And he's got, what, like six or seven sacks on the season at this point? So this is good stuff. You know, it's, it's really good. You got to see more of it. But he's been a <coughs> – sorry. He's been a huge factor for Jackson. Talking about the secondary a little bit too, you know, it wasn't a great game, I would say, by them. But Andre Sisco, you know, getting physical again, like to see that from him. Almost had a pick, dropped it. Don't, don't care, honestly, how bad this team has been at getting interceptions. And it seemed to me, although I didn't get to see a lot of, of Tyson, that he played a pretty good game as well, and I think he's missed on that, right? That's our number one guy. He can eliminate players. And that's something this team has missed, and I think it's been a big part of why they were successful, right? And you think about it, this season, well, Tyson's been on the field. This has looked like an actual, like, solid football. They've looked confident. The other time of the year where he was out there was, like, <coughs> what, the first half against Miami? So, good stuff from him. And uh, not sure I'd, I'd comment on too much else. You know, you see Ventrell Miller. Still involved as a tackler. Devin Lloyd playing a good game, too. Um, overall, you know, the defense did enough, and we're able to win this game. So, that's good stuff. Um, final thing. I don't want to miss this. Parker Washington. 96-yard touchdown return on a punt. I, there's the the optimistic way and the pessimistic way of looking at this. I'll give you the, uh, the optimistic way first. Because we always got to be pessimists. Say that, but the optimistic thing is that's that's a huge play, right? And you saw Parker Washington show that he had some ability there in the off season. Or, sorry, not the off season, preseason. And then now he's got another huge moment where he's got a touchdown, and that really flipped this game on its head completely in Jacksonville's favor. So this is big stuff from Parker Washington. That's going to be a huge reason why he's at least going to make the roster. And we'll see from there, like, what else is he going to do as a receiver? Obviously, that's been a lot more of a concern because he hasn't been super involved this year. But it is really nice to see this team have a good presence in the return game, especially with Devin Cooper in the app, which that's the pessimistic side of this because you got to sit here and ask yourself, when you had Devin Duke, uh, or, sorry, when you had Parker Washington on this team, do so you knew had some upside as a return? Now, issue, to be fair, is fumble, right? And that's also the issue with Mike Bigsby as a return. Why were we going out and paying a bunch of money for a new return? Like, that's a fair question to ask. It really has not done a whole lot for this team. So, I don't know. Um, I, I think that was a questionable acquisition. I felt that way at the time. But we'll have to see, you know. Duvernay's hurt, so I'm not going to like sit here and say he sucks or anything. He doesn't suck. He's done all right. But he's supposed to be one of the best. And we haven't got that impact yet. And we happen to have a backup that has been really good in the return game as well. So that's kind of my notes on the players. So my thoughts of going forward on this, you know, are we suddenly confident? Is, is this a sign of things turning around? Simply put, it's not. I mean, I, I, I wish it was, but we got to keep in mind, you know, who are these guys? Who have we been? It's the Panthers last year, the very end of the season. It was the Colts in Week 5 at home in the throwbacks. And it was this week against the Patriots. On the road for them, traveling to another continent with a rookie quarterback, and arguably the worst head coach in the league. I know you guys hate Doug Peterson. I think he sucks, and I don't think he's been that great either, obviously. But Gerard Mayo is arguably the worst head coach. So, I mean, it's not that impressive. But you got to win these games. It's good they won it. We're really going to learn the, the truth, and I, I think most of us already know what that probably is going to be with this upcoming. Traveling back to Jacksonville tonight, you're going to take on the Packers. 
at home. It's been a really good team. You're going to face the Eagles on the road. You're going to play that game on Sunday night as of now, and that might survive. We'll have to see if they stick on Sunday night. You're going to have the Vikings at home, and you're going to go on the road against the Lions, and you're going to host the Texans. That's not good. The next five games are going to be really hard for this team. And with how much they struggled at the start of the year, it wouldn't be shocking if they managed to go 0-5 again over these weeks. Now, I think they probably find a way to win one. We'll see. But I just I don't think this team is going to be able to come back from 2-5 and five with this kind of schedule. And, you know, I think for, for them to have any chance at the playoffs, you got to get out of those games and you got to be like, because anything less, you're – Four games behind 500, you'd be, what, four and eight? And then even with an easy schedule, you'd have to win out. So you got to try to get up to, like, five and seven at bare minimum through that and then run off a bunch of wins. Maybe you could lose one to sneak in and nine and eight. But it's just not that easy for the Jaguars. To do. Now, they got to go one game at a time. They've talked about that, and we'll see what they do. But... It doesn't change the fact that we just got out of our easiest stretch of the schedule with the Colts, the Bears, and the Patriots. We did not win all those games. We did not make up enough ground. Now it's going to get the hardest it's going to get all year. So my thoughts, I think this game ultimately, you know, it's a delaying of the inevitable. And what I mean by the inevitable is really just a lot of people you know, whether it's at the same time or not, I think Doug Peterson is definitely going to be gone as soon as the next sign of collapse comes in from this team. I think Trent Baalke, maybe he goes at the end of the year or later on in the season. Who knows with him? I mean, it's just hard to, to get a gauge on that whole situation because you think he's been terrible. You think it's undebatable that he is one of the worst general managers in the NFL. And then suddenly we hear things like, oh, he's fine. He's going to stick with us. You know, or, or the, you know, the owner likes him. Or whatever it is. Just, we never know. But I think if I had to predict at this point, Doug is safe after this game. He would have had to have lost. And if he lost, he would have lost. I think they go home. They play against the Packers. They probably lose. I think the final game for him, I was going to say at this point, my, my – New prediction, I think he gets fired after the Philly game, which would be a very interesting game to get fired after. But that's going to be my prediction at this point. I think they got a couple more games here before uh, anything happens. But that's all I've got. You know, it's it's kind of hard to record these, honestly, after the start this team has had because I, I don't want to sit here and, you know, be the Debbie Downer, but I also don't want to sit here and give everyone false hope. You know, this team is what they are. They have gotten a little bit better in some ways, but is that something we can sit here and say is playoff caliber or the caliber of the 2022 team that was able to come back from, like, four and four? I just don't think they can. I don't think they have that same fight in them, and they're going to have to prove it if they want to win. So we'll see what happens, but that's all I've got today. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Sunday and all these other games. I'm going to get to watch them myself, and we'll see you in the next video. So, go Jags. Uh, also, don't want to forget this part. Shout out our channel members. Uh, we got Premier Nasir, 904, and Artil the Die Rank. We have Mr. Dolphin and On the Prowl, and we have Scrubber Duck and 500. So, with that all said, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.